So now let's talk about the trigonometry and, and the general calculations that go with finding the components. Because once you find the components, it, it re reverts back to the simpler kinematic problems we've done, whether it's on the horizontal or the vertical, aka free fall. So let's say that we have, we know that the initial velocity of an object that's being launched is at five meters per second, right? It's being launched at an angle. And the, so the V naught is five meters per second. And let's say that uh, it's launched at an angle of 30 degrees. Well, how do we find the components, right? Because we know that V naught is something that we need in uh, calculations, but that's dependent on if we're on the X axis or the Y axis. Right now we're on neither, all right? So over here, for example, we have a V naught Y axis. And then here would be our V naught X on the X axis. Again, using the geometric properties of vectors, I could just slide this V naught Y over here, if it helps. And now we have a right triangle. So let's go ahead and set up, let's set up a few things. Let's set up sine of theta, for example. And actually, Let's not even call it theta because we know it's 30 degrees. So the opposite side is V naught Y. The hypotenuse is five meters per second. If we were to multiply both sides by five meters per second, they cancel out and we get the value for V naught Y. So we know that V naught Y is five meters per second times sine of 30, which ends up coming out to be a nice and exact answer of 2.5 meters per second. So this is the vertical component of the velocity vector for the initial velocity. If we were to set up cosine of 30, that corresponds to V naught X over five meters per second. And in a similar fashion, we would get that V naught X is equal to five meters per second times cosine of 30. Now, I'm not too crazy about this one. You should, you could definitely use Desmos or a calculator. So in a calculator, I got a really nasty long decimal, which I'm gonna round to 4.33. But if you wanna be precise and exact, you could use a, the, your uh, unit circle from trigonometry right? It's going to be radical 3 over 2. So if you want an exact answer, you could say it's 5 radical 3 over 2. That's if you're that hardcore about it. But if you want to be careful, you know, you know, you could just use that 4.33 or even go a little farther with some of the decimal values. Um, people make a big deal about significant figures, sig figs. Just be careful. Just be careful. Know what you're doing. You could, of course, always just keep this expression and use that in the future if you need to instead of actually getting a decimal value. Well, cool story, bro. Let's hear it again. Uh, let's not. You can replay that if you need to. But how does this fit into the whole picture? Well, because this object is going to keep going, obviously. And it's going to be doing this weird, funny thing. But we know that at any given point, this V naught X is going to be the same. So it'll be the same here. It'll be the same here. It'll be the same length here at the apex. It'll be the same length here. And it'll be the same length here at the end. Right, I ran out of space, sorry. And how does this help us? Because let's say I want to find out how far this thing traveled. That's a delta X problem. So if we look at our three kinematics and you know, and, and we look at what's going on here, well, <laughs> it's did V naught X ever change, right? So if we look at if we were given another variable, right? So if we look at the, the kinematics themselves, you know, we have V is equal to V naught plus A times T, but this changes to an X and an X now. But this is your V naught X, and then this is your VX final over here, or if you want to do it right here, wherever you want to do it at. But notice that they never change. They never change. It stays constant. So what happens is your acceleration kind of disappears. And if I want to do delta X, for example, and we just make the little provision here that now because of the two dimensional stuff this is V naught X. Well, I have V naught X. We have it up here, 
okay and it never changed the horizontal component of the, of the velocity never changed so that means acceleration on the x-axis is zero that means this whole term is gone and this reverts back to the simple basic um, equation that we use to define velocity right displacement over time so what we're saying is this problem becomes dummy simple once you find out what v not x is because all you gotta do is plug that in plug in how much time it took to get to the end and you have displacement what about using v not y well remember as we go uh, further up this v not y becomes well this v not I should say becomes it's not v not I'm sorry it's v y <laughs> so this is v not y and then this is a v y and then this is a v y and then this is a v y and then this is a vy, and then this is a vy. It's a parabola, just it's going in opposite directions. The, the, the velocity vectors for the component of the vertical component. But you notice that this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this becomes a bit tricky because the acceleration is happening. And we would use, for example, the free fall kinematics. So let's say we want to go from this point right here to this point right here. Well, this is convenient for us because we know vy at this point is equal to zero at the max point. Here we were given a v not y of 2.5, right? That, that's what we, we found out the hard way. So we could set up, for example, uh, v squared is v naught squared plus 2 times g times delta y. And look what happens, right? We have to make sure this is a vy right here and a v not y. But I know that vy, if I want to go to the apex, I know that's zero. So that becomes zero. What's V not Y? Well, we found that out over here, right? What's gravity? In this case, because up is positive and gravity is going against it, gravity will be negative 9.8. So then I'll plug in negative 9.8. And then that would allow me to solve for delta Y and get the maximum height that it got to when it reached the apex. So this is why we're doing, we spent time last time talking about the horizontal components in great detail. I mean, sorry, the horizontal kinematics in great detail and the vertical free fall kinematics in great detail separately. And now we're going to put them together. And we don't put them together into the same equation. What we do is we take what we're given originally, we find the components, and then we go ahead and, and piecemeal it to the equations where they belong to. But it's more on us because we have to understand the concepts really clearly and be able to set things up appropriately to get the values that we need.